Hey, this is Ralph, and I want to look at this uh, particular table here in our Access database. This is our Alaska Legacy Fishing Lodge database that I've been working on for the past few videos. We just looked at some field properties, but I would like to look at my customer's table in Datasheet view, and I'm just going to click this little shutter bar to close my objects window. So far, I've only got tables over there. And I just want to kind of look at this for a few minutes here. This is datasheet view of a particular table. And I don't personally spend a lot of time in datasheet view. This is not necessarily the view of a table you would use on a daily basis. Now, if this was your own table, your own database, then you might do so. But if you've designed a database for a client to use or for a customer or an employee to use, it's more likely you would have forms and regular queries or searches already set up. But there's quite a bit you can do on the fly if you've just got all your data in Datasheet view. And if you are an Excel person, then you should feel pretty comfortable with kind of navigating around here. So don't forget, um, I've got a bunch of data. Well, I'll say a bunch. I've got 30 records. Actually, I got 31 because I added a uh, 31st person in. But I've got a bunch of records here. And I don't want you to worry about that. Even if you only have five or six people, you're still going to get the idea for how this um, system works. But I'm over here in Datasheet view. And let's kind of glance real quick. At the lower left portion of Datasheet view, I have my record navigation buttons. And I can use these arrows here. I know this is at the bottom of my recording. In fact, let me just kind of move this up real quick so you can see this really clear. So in the lower left corner of my access window, I've got these navigation buttons. And I can just click one after the other to move record by record through my table. Now I'm at the end. And of course, there's the very first and the very last. There's also a little arrow with a star. And this is something I would use if I was going to enter in a new record. Now, I'm not terribly fond of entering in a new record using this particular technique. If I do enter a new record, of course, it prompts me down here. I can hit Tab. I'll do another Smith, but this will be Jane Smith, 321 Third Street, um, Orlando, Florida. Oops, that's right. I could have just typed in a lowercase FL, automatically uppercases. Notice that I can't type more than two characters either because of those field properties. Florida zip code and they need a phone number in there. Um, while I'm here you'll notice that these most recent phone numbers let me just tab over here are simply plain numbers there's no hyphens in there. These last two are actually the better way to store data. I kind of made a little mistake earlier in order to save myself a little bit of time I made some data in Excel and I simply mass I did just did an import right into a table because I didn't want to type in 30 records of people. And uh, my Excel data, I, I mistakenly left, I included hyphens in there. I'll fix it up later on. It's not going to cause me any problem at the moment. It's not going to cause you any problem at the moment. But really, phone number data only needs to look like it's got parentheses and hyphens to people. Um, the computer doesn't really give a crap about hyphens. So just being a string of 10 numbers is fine for it. So that's the benefit of using an input mask. You can take what looks like a pretty just cluttered piece of numeric data, but it's really a piece of text information. In this case, a phone number or a credit card number or a social security number, something like that. So don't worry about those differences, and I won't enter in. So basically, so this is one way to enter in a new record. I'm not fond of entering in a new record this way because I think there's too many mistakes that can be made. I don't have a very I don't have a lot of fields for this record, but in this particular layout, you don't really see all the records at once. So a form for entering new information is really, I think, the most practical way to go. But you have that option. If you're doing some quick data entry while you're practicing, this could be a pretty good, nice, fast, efficient way to type in some mock information for people. OK, so those are our navigation buttons down there on the lower left. Down here in the lower right, I do have some view buttons. I don't tend to use these. I tend to use the view toggle, which is right up here in my home ribbon. But you do have these as choices. So there's, of course, data sheet view and design view. These are the two I'd probably encourage you to use the most while you're learning stuff. Later on in the term, we might start to check out some pivot tables, pivot charts with our data. But um, those are not trivial skills. So I think we'll just stick with looking at our table in these two very common views, data sheet view and design view. 
the home button, home ribbon, with the view toggle jumps back and forth between those two common views. And we can use the view drop down to choose these others. All right, so that takes care of our status bar, really. Now, some of this stuff is going to be pretty familiar. If I were to click on a particular field, notice there's a drop down. And from that, I can quickly choose to sort alphabetically by that last name. I can also choose a filter here. And you know what? Instead of filtering here, let me jump over to state real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and um, uncheck my select all. And maybe I'm just interested in Florida people. So I'll just check my Florida folks. Do I have any Georgia folks? Doesn't look like it. So I'll just click OK, and then I'll get a listing of the three Florida customers, Lakeland, Orlando, and Tampa. So you'll notice that I now have a little funnel. That's that means that I have a filter applied to this particular field. And of course, the more records you have, the more interesting and realistic using filters in this way is going to be. There we go. I'm going to just turn that filter off by clicking my toggle filter up in my sort and filter command group. Notice I've also got some sorting, ascending, descending options up here. Okay, so I think that's really the meat of what I wanted you to see that you can navigate through here. And of course, you can filter and sort. There's a few other options. There is, you can actually put totals rows inside of. Um, your data sheet view. I don't really have a good field for totaling right now, so I think we'll investigate that one a little bit later on. Um, there's some pretty good find and replace. So if I wanted to do a global replace, find everybody with Florida and actually make them Georgia, then I could do something like that. I will look in my current field for my hold field, and I'll go ahead and replace all. We, we know that there should be three replacements for mine. And it says, my search item was not found. Oh, I'm in the wrong field. It, you notice it says, look in current field. And I'm currently, I must not be in my state field. So let me go ahead and change this over. And let me cancel this real quick, actually. I'll change this, make sure I'm on my state field. Let's try this again, just so we can see it work. All right, replace all. Um, you won't be able to undo. I'm getting a little warning message here. I won't be able to undo. Do I want to continue? Yes. Uh, it doesn't tell me that I had my three replacements, but in theory, if I try to do a filter, Florida is no longer a choice. I do have Georgia as an option. So if I choose Georgia, there we go. Those are my three people, Lakeland, Orlando, and Tampa, Georgia. All right, so data sheet view, explore this a little bit. Of course, you can also resize your columns, just like in Excel. You can double click to auto size them. You could select several and auto size them as a group, just like in Excel. And of course, let me remove this filter, clear filter from state. All right, so that's a data sheet view for a table.